All right, welcome everybody to the stream. Um, how are you guys doing? Today we're gonna make some beats on modular. Uh, hold on, there we go. Uh, yeah, so thanks to Valdev and um, Hillian Lucas for the raid <laughs> during the countdown. Um, yeah, today we're gonna make some beats and this is gonna be fun. Um, let me just, so since last um, stream on, um, on modular, I've had quite a few updates about this boy here. Um, so basically the case is now complete. I think last stream was like, not quite complete yet. Um, so what I managed to get, I finally got my hands on the sample drawn by um, Erica Synth, which is super, super dope. And we're gonna like go in detail about it. It's really like the biggest like module I've got like update since last time. Um, and I got myself a nice voice module again. Uh, the the update is like all Erica synth, so I got like the Pico voice here, which is like great like synth oscillator, macro oscillator kind of module thing. It's really really neat. Um, and I also got myself a new mixer, uh, which is super useful because I can like send like three different channels and it all like sums up into like one output, so it saves me space on like my VCAs, which I usually like use for uh, mixing. Anyways, thanks uh, Kutai for the little raid. Uh, nice start to the stream. Anyway, <laughs> also thank you, Helene. This is really sweet. Uh, but yeah, I hope everybody's doing good. I am pretty excited um, because I've been like playing with this new setup. So I, I got the new modules Then I basically switched out the layout quite a bit. Um, and uh, I've been playing with that for the past like few days, uh, making beats, a lot of trap beats. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've shared any on Twitter yet, um, but I've been like doing like Instagram lives and stuff, just like jamming. Um, but yeah, anyway. So this is very much going to be like, you know, beat making, uh, live stream as opposed to just the usual modular stuff. Well, usually it's like beat making anyway, but anyways, what I'm saying is what I'm getting at is that the simple drum that I just got is like for this case, it's like a game changer because basically what it is, is that it's like a really powerful like sampler module that can have like a bunch of like CV um, inputs like assigned to many, many different things. Um, it's, it's super cool. It's super cool. I've been like doing like a bunch of stuff and it's like super neat. So <clears throat> let's get into it. I've also like loaded this boy up with like a bunch of like samples and like a bunch of different things. So yeah. Let's, let's start with that boy. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I made myself some like kits and like just created some like, uh, samples for this. You can't really see the screen, but, um, there's nothing too important here. This is just like the library for this. Um, but let's go through some of the samples. I loaded on this. I have like a bunch of stuff like they're really good for like beat making and I have like a lot of it. This is like all different stuff. Not even halfway. So let's see. I'll just start going down. Also sound check. You, you guys let me know if you can hear properly. I'm gonna turn my headphones up. It should be like pretty good volume I think so I have like so much stuff oh 
I've been like doing <laughs> mostly like kind of like trap beats lately, but we can go for anything, especially with all the stuff we have available to us now. We can go for lo-fi or like the usual jungle. I'm feeling kind of like trappy today though. I've been feeling trappy for the past week. <laughs> What though is your preference? Uh, I I uh, use FL Studio 20. Um, I've been trying to get into Ableton 2 because uh, it processes samples better. But um, yeah, FL Studio is what I use for anything I've released so far. <laughs> Really convenient trigger like inputs too. It's really neat. That's like Jonggu sample right there. Smooth pads. That's loud. Yeah, pretty good samples. So it's like, it's super cool because I have like a bunch of like these long samples. Everything is like mono, but with this, and we'll get into it after, you can like chop things up and everything. It's super neat. Final Fantasy. Any Final Fantasy fans in chat? Wait, so is it a sampler? Yes. Um, it's a two-channel sampler. Uh, you can have up per channel. You can have to have up to like sixty-four samples, and we'll also I'll go into details even more as we go. But you can like switch between like the samples you have on each channel. So that means you have one hundred twenty-eight samples across two channels you can have it's it is like a sampler on steroids um and not only that but it's like a module right so it can speak to all of this so and so far i've been like making very simple beats on my own for the past few days but you can push this thing to like insane you know territories like um for like ambient, it's really cool because you can like randomize the slices and stuff. Anyway, I'm talking, but I'll just show you. You guys will see like how cool this is. Also, uh, thank you, Lucas, for the sub. That's very cool. That's kind of cool, very epic. <laughs> Bit of funk. Uh, how long did it take you to build this current rack? Uh, I started this rack on a much smaller size um, back in March 20th. So I think it's like a little over like what, three months or so. Um, so relatively fast, I've been dumping all my money to modular lately. Um, but I've been like obsessed with modular for years. I finally took uh, the jump a few months ago. Um, but yeah, this thing is, uh, <laughs> it's expensive, but it's, it's so good. It's been like my life for the past few months. It's just like all I do. who can understand this stuff are so cool my brain just explodes <laughs> really it's like it looks super intimidating and like looks like really otherworldly spaceship kind of stuff but once you like really get to know each module individually you can really break it down fairly easily and as i go through anyway i, I explain everything i do 
I'm sure after like a stream, hopefully you have like a better understanding. But it does look like pretty intimidating. <laughs> and I've been like confused myself for years before I even got into it. Do you think you'd ever do a show with only modular? Uh, it, that's difficult to say. Probably not for like, you know, the stuff I usually release that for me that works for, for now that works best with like DJ sets and stuff like on CDJs and stuff. But uh, things like, you know, like a there's like a bunch of like these um, modular events that happens a lot. I see in like, uh, you know, modular artists like participating, participating. Uh, and that'd be dope to like do like, you know, like a 20 minute, 30 minute set. I did like a whole like, so I was playing with this the other day on Instagram live and I did like an, a one hour long session <laughs> making trap and stuff. So that's definitely something I would like to do eventually. Uh, it's stuff I, I will eventually like do on my own Twitch channel here anyway. Just like making like an actual kind of like modular set with like different tracks flowing into each other-ish. That'd be cool. I'd be not to do that. Uh, so would this be something you would use to track your automation for samples? Uh, what do you mean? Wait. Um... Well, so if you're talking about the sample drum, that's like the sampler itself, right? Again, I'm just going to pick like a sample and then we'll actually get into it. Also, hello, painful kaboom. I want something kind of pretty and dreamy. Not piano, though. That's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, I do have a Discord server. I always forget to update the link. Um, but I do. I'll try to update it before the end of the stream. It's just like one shot. We could do something with that. I I want to use like a something I can chop though, so I can show you how that works. That's pretty good. I have a bunch of stuff on there. <laughs> anyway, I think at the beginning it had some pretty neat stuff. that very briefly Final Fantasy 13 I heard yeah I have some FF uh ones hold on I have this one we could use that that'd be cool yeah I'm down for that what do you guys think make a trap beat out of that <laughs> uh and I have this other one I think it's the same one chopped up yeah let's use that one Final Fantasy. Oh shit! Thank you, uh, for the the gifted dub, Apache. Also, let me check. I've been missing some messages. Um, 
since you're in Japan, are there a lot of shops that specializes in analog modular stuff? Are you or are you limited to buying things mostly online? I can't recall seeing anything like this at Yodobashi and Big Camera. Uh, yeah, so you probably won't find anything like this at uh, Yodobashi or Big Camera, but um, there are some shops. I do like get this online. I get also some of the things like imported because. Uh, the reality is that it's pretty tough to get your hands on modular, uh, well, especially modular in Tokyo. Analog stuff, though, you can find quite a few places. But uh, if there was, like, places I could uh, point to you for, like, modular stuff and analog stuff, that would be uh, 5G in Harajuku, uh, what is it, um, Echigoya in um, Shibuya, I think. And lately, I, I managed to get the simple drum and other like Erica synth that like modules that the other stores didn't have. And I was at um, a place called uh, Whirlies, and that's in Akiba. Um, so that's like the three stores I know have like modular. And then for analog stuff, um, yeah, I guess, well, I mean, they all do. Uh, like analog and like synthesizers and stuff like they sell that um i can also like recommend like just like secondhand stuff like from bukov that's that's where i get like sometimes if you're lucky that's how i got like some some of my synth <laughs> uh fun fact uh i got really lucky and got a gx3p uh like real synth from like 1983 or something which is which is like worth like a thousand bucks if it's like in good shape. Uh, I got it for like seventy bucks because I guess the person selling it at Bukov didn't know it was like, a, like really nice synthesizer. <laughs> so that was crazy. It was like back in twenty seventeen or something. Also, thank you, Mango, for all the gifted sub. That's crazy. Uh, what I mean is, I'm assuming you'll probably be recording what's coming through this into your DAW. I'm assuming these are the knobs are attached to some effects, so I was thinking it's a way to do live automations. All all these knobs, all especially on this, um, or if you're talking about the whole case itself, modular is like really crazy and cool. We'll get into it, and you'll see like what this is all about. So I'm gonna add this already, and then we're gonna chop it up. So I'm gonna go into the sample menu, and here we can see our little sample. Um, and because these uh, little samples I have in this folder, they're all like beat loops. Uh, they're all like, they're set to a specific, um, you know, uh, range for like to be sliced at. So it's going to be, it's going to make this like super easy. Also, thank you uh, too much wrong for the party, the raid, um, and Spency GG for the raid of 41 people. That's crazy. Uh, you yeah, have swag music. That's really sweet. <laughs> um, also, sorry for anyone coming with raids. Uh, I have like, I think I'm li limited the chat to like followers or something because I got spammed one day or like, yeah, it's like a butt thing. Anyway, uh, welcome to the stream. Dude, I saw you live and I had to raid, bro. I love your stuff. That's sweet. Thank you. Uh, we're going to make some beats out of Final Fantasy. So check this out, right? I think you can kind of see. It's like a little hard to see the screen with like how my thing's set up. But um, I can just set up the amount of like slices. So here we're going to go for like... We could go eight or sixteen. I'm gonna go for. Uh, let's try. Let's try eight first. So I select the the amount of slices. You seriously can't see this, but <laughs> you'll have to trust uh, me. Then I go slice, and here you can kind of see like it's been like sliced up, right? And that's like the first part, and it goes to the next one every time it's triggered. So now I think I'll go for uh, 16 instead. So we have more control. 
Uh, yeah, slice that. So now. Uh, dude, this thing you got is so huge. I can't even begin to understand what all the lovers and nubs mean. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, this is a quick uh, brief explanation of what is happening for people that are on YouTube. This, uh, this is a modular synthesizer. So as opposed to a typical synthesizers like I have like on the side, you can't see with all the keys and stuff. This is like basically a bunch of different parts that could make up synthesizers, but it's all custom and I get to choose which modules I want to use. And the cool thing that's really specific to modular is that in usual typical synthesizers, everything inside is already connected and you just kind of, you know, play with knobs and whatnot. But modular synth, you can see like a bunch of like inputs and outputs everywhere. Nothing is connected and you do what's called patching in order to make things function however you want. And the cool thing about that is because since you can patch anything anywhere, you can have like endless and sometimes really complex possibilities and a really interesting sounds coming out of this, which uh, like a typical synth couldn't do. So let me show you an example. I have this uh, sample sliced up. Now I'm gonna have uh, this module here uh, trigger um, the sample drum. This is just like a, a, a trigger module. So it like sends uh, triggers all around and it can shape the pulse width and you know, how it's like laid out the division, et cetera. So I'm gonna have that. So now this is like triggering every step at 90 BPM. I can also do one thing to make this a little smoother. You can actually have like, um, like an envelope for the sample. I can like shape it however I want. It's kind of nice and I could like, if I wanted to, I could go like, that's actually kind of cool. Another thing I'm going to go ham and keep going with this, it can add effects. That's actually kind of cool. Let's try to go with this. I can also go ahead and like change the tone of this. Hopefully this is like loud enough. Yeah, right. And uh, yeah, so I transformed that into this pretty fast and that's like only not even barely scratching the surface of like how powerful modular synthesizers can be. Um, so now from this, what we can do is we, we need a beat, right? We got like this little thing happening. Uh, we're going to have fun with this guy and this guy is like the data bender. It basically like glitches any incoming audio, uh, into something super, super neat. Uh, but before we do that, which is going to be really, really fun. Uh, I want to lay down a basic beat. I'll try to be quick about it because these things can get a little uh, tricky with the trigger riot because it's not a typical sequencer. It's like a division kind of sequencer, almost like circadian kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to use that to trigger um, the uh, Pico drum, which is now chock full of sweet um, trap samples because <laughs> I finally got my hands on the programmer. Also, by the way, I want to show you guys this thing. I finally got myself and started like um, filling in a little toolbox for my uh, modular stuff. <laughs> it's kind of neat. 
Look at that. It's like a little toolbox. So um, I have like all the screws and whatnot. And so what I got recently was um, the Pico Programmer. And that thing can actually, well, it, it's what you use to program the drums in this. It's kind of like annoying because you have to like take it out and whatnot. But um, now it's actually full of like trap samples, which is neat. Uh, do you solder your own stuff? I don't. I haven't tried to do like any DIY modules yet, but uh, it's something I might look into in the future. Um, uh, was it even in track? Make her like a nurse see. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so um, let's make the beat. Uh, I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a this trigger the kick and this trigger the snare, right? Um, and I'm gonna send this right into my. Uh, convenient mixer over here. Um, I totally would drop a sub, but yeah, boy is moving out of his parent place soon. I might not be able to pay bills. Oh yeah, no. Uh, I wish you luck, uh, Spency. Um, uh, just being here vibing is um already really nice. So. Let's send this into the VCA right here, which this is basically uh, our mixer for today. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, every 32. And this one every 16. And I'm going to clock shift it. Eight steps. Uh, is this playing? Now it's playing. So. I'm also going to change the pulse width to be an actual trigger pulse width. Sometimes modules have like latency issues if like the pulse width of their like trigger is like really long. Uh, anyway, so. There we go. So really basic. I'm going to have another division here. Every, also every 32, but I'm going to shift it like what? 10 steps. Yeah. You know, just like really basic trap beat. Uh, thank you. Emma demo, um, for the, for the raid. So many raids today, it's crazy. Uh, one thing we can also do, which is kind of neat, is use plats here, which is a sweet micro oscillator, but it can also do uh, drum stuff, percussions and whatnot, and also like things like hi-hats. So if I set this division to like something really fast, like this fast-ish, can trigger it, and then I'll send that output over to the mix here, which is basically gonna be our mixer for the drums today. Um, so this one. It's cool, right? And then since this is the master clock, we can just like make this slower or faster.
think 95 is good. Um, but we're just getting started, right? One thing I'm gonna do right away so we can just like, um, move on, like actually start shaping everything. For right now, it's like super basic. You don't even know how cool it's gonna get with data bander and everything else. So, uh, I'm gonna send, um, the drum output. So our like kick and snare, right? I'm actually gonna use a bigger one because it's a little further. I have the long boys. I'm using what's called a stack cable, which has like, you can see like another like little output that actually duplicates um, our signal, right? So it's sending it still through the mix, but I can have like, I have like a copy of that signal in here, right? Um, heading to sleep. All right, thank you, uh, Spency for coming and for the raid. Um, Hope you have sweet dreams. We'll be making beats. Um, hopefully see you next time. Um, so I'm sending that uh, signal, kick snare, to the envelope follower, which I'm then sending to, whoops, um, the um, voltage inverter, which is gonna invert our signal. So kick and snare, and the envelope follower that turns uh, the amplitude signal or like the amplitude of our signal into a CV um, like signal, which then we can use for like things like sidechain, which is what I'm trying to do here. So to do that, I have to also invert the signal and then offset it. Um, uh, what would happen if I were to nickel me time right now? I almost have enough points. I say I say like um keep Nico and me for like streaming when I'm uh on my VTuber. Uh like using my VTuber. <laughs> I can't really do much of a Nico and me uh in real life. My VTuber is really nice and cute and can do like, you know, cat ears, wiggles, but uh can't do much here. <laughs> I'm also gonna open the door because it's a little hot here in Tokyo. Let me check. It's, I think it's like the hottest it's been in a while. Yeah, God, it's like 33 degrees, like Celsius. Uh, you could do it with your hands. Have you ever seen deft hands? Yeah, I'm just gonna do it like. <laughs> deft nickel hands, I have like nickel in me that just like Shows on like every finger and stuff. <laughs> also, yeah, I'll stay hydrated. I got my bottle here. Um, all right, let's get this side chain going. So I'm going to do a trick to have, because I don't have much of like an offset generator, which is kind of super annoying. I'm going to get this eventually. But what I'm doing instead is sending like a, the fastest like trigger I have, which here is like my hi hat. I'm also gonna lock this on the ground. Which one is it? This one? Okay. There we go. Do you prefer when it rains or when it's hot? I would say it depends. I like a dry summer. But um, um, yeah, that's difficult. It, it depends on the context, right? I wouldn't like it to rain for too long, but I'm a very, I, I'm I'm definitely team uh, rain outside and make beats inside. Um, so I'm gonna send that trigger into uh, my sample and hold here, which is set on track and hold mode, and I have my slew all the way up, so. When this starts, you can see like it's sampling it. But if I put the salute all the way up, now I have like a constant like gate, right? And I can use that to actually offset signal. So I'm gonna send 
50 envelope follower like signal here. I'm gonna use like a really tiny one. It's really close. Um, into veils here, which is another VCA. And you can see here, this is our the shape we want, but we want to like offset it. So I'm gonna send sample and hold into the second channel here and then boost it up. And now you can see we have like sidechain. So I'm gonna, now I can send this to sidechain and like it's using like, you know, the actual audio from the Pico. So if I were to like, you know, it would actually like, it follows it, hence envelope follower, right? So that's really neat. Now we can actually grab that um, brand new signal, which is created, and uh, we can send that into the CV input of our um, sample drum. I'm just gonna It's like side chaining. And then I have like the envelope follower here. Uh, I can, I'm able to like shape the envelope. So I can like have like lots of release to have like really long kind of um, like side chain. I'm gonna change the, well, yeah, it's kind of nice. Let me try another snare. <laughs> That's really hard. We could go for that. Let me shape it a bit. Yeah, we could go for some really hard beats. <laughs> So we got our basic setup kind of ready now. So now what I'm gonna do is, well, I'm gonna, now we're gonna do the 808, right? So the 808 is simple since it's just like, well, it depends on how you want to go about it, but one easy way to do it, at least with this setup, is to actually use the kick trigger. So I'm using, I'm duplicating the trigger I'm using to like send to the kick, but I'm also going to send it to uh, our peak of voice here, which is going to be our 808. It's like a synthesized 808. So trigger goes in and then output goes to our mixer. <coughs> God, even without a bunch of minor details, this is already so enjoyable. Uh, that's really sweet, Captain. <laughs> Captain Juno909, that's a great name. <laughs> um, it's going to get a lot more fun. Uh, where's Cinema Roll? Cinema Roll is behind me. I wonder if I can put her anywhere. Uh, maybe, maybe like in the background here. I know she's going to fall. I can put her with the cables on the side here, maybe. She's hiding, she's shy. <laughs> Anyways. Everybody say hi, she'll be on the side. Um, 3 a.m. here, so I'm heading off to bed. All right, thank you, Lucas, for the raid. See you next time. Um. Okay, so uh, let's hear our 808. Pretty basic, but 
does the job. Um, one thing I'm going to do already is duplicate the sidechain signal we've done. Um, whoop, there we go. And send it to the 808 as well. It's long on one thing. Oh, because it is just. Oh, it's because it's this thing, isn't it? Yeah. Hold on. That should be better. There we go. <laughs> but then on the floor, but still in frame. That'll be kind of sad on the floor, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, she's sleeping. Uh, Alright, making beats with cinema roll. Um, now one thing we can do to go even harder is to send uh, our 808 into our DSP here, which is a multi-effect module thing. Um, and I can send this in there and introduce some distortion, some nice distorted 808s. Um, so I'm sending this back in and now that's kind of nice, right? I fell asleep while watching and the 808 woke me up. Sorry. Death by 808. Um, all right, so this is cool. Uh, but now we'll have to tune it to the actual sample, right? And also this is cool because since this is like our input, like sidechain, input thing this like basically uh like controls how deep the sidechain is so if i want no sidechain goes down and sidechain goes up um saw thing about it starts looking really cool with all the wires sticking out yeah right it's one of the <laughs> first appeals i had about module it's like what is this like weird thing with all these cables like kind of cool it looks like a you know thing they used to like connect phones and stuff um i like the mess of like the cables it's definitely a vibe anyways so we'll just gonna do it by ear figure out like which notes I want for like each part. Just putting the uh, be a little louder just to make sure it's like not too much in the background. That note is good, but I need like a deeper one for the other one, I think. Yeah, so it'd be like... This, and then like... So, then to do that, we're gonna make another trigger which is going to be uh every uh maybe 32 i think 
32 steps. And we're going to divide it by 50. Well, we're going to make the pulse width uh, 50%. Uh, yeah, no, that's what I thought. It's I think it's 64 steps. Yeah, because then it's like divided by two, it's 32. Makes sense. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna send it to our um VCA. And that's the reason why I need like an actual offset generator, because I'm doing the whole sidechain through the VCA here and sticking all the freaking space. It's cool. But it's like not efficient at all. Anyway, we still have like channels left, but um, so I'm sending this here, and then I'm gonna send the output of this gate, and we're just we're just sending like a gate into it. We're gonna send that to our dual quantizer, so it's like nice and locked to a scale, and then we're gonna send this back into, or like the like output of this, we're gonna send it to the Pico voice, which is our 808, so the 808 pitch, and that's going to define how high the second note is going to be, right? Uh, so let's see. I think it's shifted, so I'm going to like, let me think, I could just like move the sample instead. No, I think that's good, actually. That's what we want. Uh, did you choose these modules yourself, or did this rack come like this? I chose all this myself. Uh, I started, I did like little bit by little bit, and I started like um, three months ago. So this is all picked by, by me. quite the right note I'm not sure it's like almost like I think it's like the right note but the tuning is not right it's kind of hard to tune with this it might be better unit Make it linear. Yeah, it's on all the nodes, so it should be fine. Every time I feel like I catch it and then it doesn't quite get there. Oh, I think that's it. Yeah. I could fine tune the sample itself, I guess, to really make it stick, but.
Yeah, I think that's good. All right, there we go. Now comes the actual fun part where we, we send um, our little FF sample into the data bender. The data bender is one of my favorites because it's a glitch module, basically. <laughs> and so uh, we're going to turn this like little staccato thing we've had so far into something much more crazy. It's from the sample is from Final Fantasy. I'm not sure which of the games. Uh it's just labeled Final Fantasy. Um whoop. uh and then send this back in here. So right now we have the same sample. Also gonna do one little thing. Uh, which is to add another kick somewhere. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, it's kinda cool though. Uh full width. We want this down. Then we're just gonna plug shift this around. is all like yeah that's kind of cool anyway so Oh no, I realized <laughs> because we were like sending that like offbeat like kick to the, the same like output of that's like triggering this. Um <laughs> we're like shifting it every so often. Um let me think then. If I have it Well there's nothing here, so I could have it here. Oh but hmm. What's the shift on this one? 10? And then this one is just, what's the 808? No, that's actually the, ah. Uh, I'm trying to think. We'll just cut it off for now. It's okay, we'll figure it out later. What I want to show is the actual data bender doing fun stuff. So right now it's like all fun and whatever. I'm gonna uh, actually cut. Right, I can just do this. Let me actually sync it again. It's like off. Oh, I can do that, I guess. There we go. Anyway, so we got our little sample. Now, what we can do is glitch it up. Let's see, it should be sending, yeah, the clock is there. So right now it's just like we're triggering the sample, right? I can change the amount of like the, you know, length of the cycle. Um, then I can make it go a little more crazy. If 
actually change the let me change the envelope real quick would like to know your location. Deeple has got nothing on Data Bender. <laughs> I can also corrupt the audio by introducing some kind of like bit crushing or like downsampling. this So I'm going to double check how the feedback is on this. I don't know. That's fine. Okay. Checking my own stream <laughs> just to make sure the audio is fine. Cool, right? And we can do another thing like send this to Forbidden Planet, which is um, a filter module. We're going to high pass it. Resonance is really nice on this too. actually make automate this so check this out I'm gonna um, I'm gonna send um, where is it this guy I'm gonna send that trigger duplicate it stack it like boom like this and send that to could have used a small one but I'm gonna send that to marbles marbles which is a random sampler. It's basically generates random triggers uh, or like rhythms and um, values. Um, and we can use that in sync to, you know, change 
um, to like automate the filter on this. So, and it's got like a nice attenuator or like attenuator, uh, which uh, is a blessing because that means no VCA is needed. Um, I'm gonna send, do I have time to bring more ammo? So I'm gonna send this right into here. And now you're all here. If I turn the itinerator up. It's, random it's randomizing. If I make it like only positive values, I'll work better. That's cool, right? Uh, what music stuff are you working on? Have you got any, any new singles coming soon? Uh, I do. I can't say anything about it, but I guess I can just say that uh, I do have something that should come out very soon. Um, and that's that. So, yay. <laughs> but uh, apart from that, uh, I've been working on like a ton of stuff um, on my own time, um, which is all like personal projects, which is cool. And I don't really want to talk about too much because I don't like talking about things when there's nothing solid yet. But um, definitely making a bunch of like different musics. Um, and... Yeah, I'm trying to see like what I can really talk about. I don't like talking, like spoiling anything, but definitely working on a bunch of stuff. And I got something coming out pretty soon. So yeah, anyways. And we can also like switch it back to the normal sample. One thing we can add, which could be fun, is I have a few cool little samples. Um, on there, I've added myself. Well, actually, I have a nice like 808 cabo on the tipped up one. We're gonna add, but uh, on top of that, I have some of these sounds hold on uh oops is that this one? Oh wait hold on i have sent the wrong one i'm an idiot there we go oh no am i still an idiot i think somehow i am oh yes i am there we go <laughs> so I have a bunch of sounds that I don't know, maybe some of you might recognize. Uh, yeah, we got like. Uh, Kirby and Metal Gear Solid. That was like the PS2 BIOS thing here. And then Sonic, Yoshi, Young Link. 
Uh, are those vocal chops from Tycoon and Titsujin? No, it's just, like I said, just like all the freaking, just like voice clips from these games. Um, so we could, one thing we could do, and I'd also display, uh, kind of show like what the stuff you can do with the sample drum is I'm going to add like, like this one and then this one and then <laughs> I'm going to replace it with that, by that one. Remove, add, there we go. And then maybe Yoshi. Add. Did you find those in a pack or just sample them? I just sampled them. I was trying to look for a pack with like this stuff, but I just like sampled them and then uh, normalized them on NFL and stuff and made just like a useful little pack. I find myself making like a bunch of packs for hardware lately, which I guess will come in handy when I'm actually producing stuff on DAW, but it's kind of fun. I never like took the time to do this, but it's the best way with like hardware. Um, so now we have all these samples. I can like, I'm on the second channel right now. I have like a little switch here, which I can go from like, like a channel to another. I'm trying to <laughs> freaking move these out of the way. Um, so it's like this boy too. So now I can like, kind of like go in between like it's samples. I can like uh, adjust like the start of the sample. We're gonna do that on each. Cause I guess I'm sloppy when I when it comes to making my own sample packs. Um sampling stuff on your own is fun too. Just recording random stuff. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna do that soon. I have like this nice mic and my little kawaii like brand Glockenspiel kind of thing. I wanna like record this and then make like some loops I can use for like ambient hardware or like ambient modular stuff. Anyway, so we have like all these voice clips. Now what we can do is have like, um, let me think. What did I do it last time anyway? It's weird, right? I feel like last time I managed to like get more out of the trigger right. Oh yeah, it's because I probably did this, but then let me see. What if I just use that one and then made this like, yeah, it's probably how I did that. So divide that by just like that. And then um, this one can be nothing. Oh, it can be anything I want. Okay, cool. Anyways, so now I can set the division for this. Also, I, I'll set the pulse width for this to be like very low. Um, I'm gonna um, set this as like every 32 steps. And so every 32 step with a probability, I have this feature here of like say 50%. So there's one out of two chances that every 32 steps, this gets triggered. And we can use that to randomly trigger um, our vocal shots here. But not, not only that, we're also going to, um, I guess I could make this bipolar then so we can have a better range of things. I don't really need this anyway. I don't care about automating that. So now I can send this into CV1 and then I can tell it what to assign CV1 to. It's already starting. Um, and I'm gonna send it to the sample. So now it's gonna grab like a random sample Well, since there's like a one or two chance 
I'll make the probability higher. Wait, is this the right one? It's always choosing the same one, no. Oh, come. Is it actually switching, though? No, it's not. So hold on. CV. <laughs> um, I think it was that one, but, you know, it's definitely simple. Send it to the second one just to like make sure I didn't do something weird, but come on, sample, and then like this. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, come. Yeah, I guess you kind of sign the same thing on both CVs, but I'm signing random values. Is it because the depth is too high? It shouldn't be because if it was working at all, I should be seeing it. Maybe it's because the mode is not right. That's oh, because, hold on, I'm in this mode? No. Oh, wait. That's kind of working now. So then now maybe the depth is like too much. That's so weird. Oh, it's because the bias is maybe wrong. Modular technical difficulties. Thank you for the sub, uh, bits and bytes, by the way. Um, what about now? Oh, that seems to be working. Only between like a few though. Maybe if I make this like smoother. It's weird. Cause I definitely have, yeah, the other samples can see I have like a tiny oscillator here. Uh, huh. either way, let's not like, you know, obsess over that. We already got like, We'll figure it out, but what we can do now is add some delay, like.
Because it's bipolar and it needs to be set in the middle. Figured it out, yay. So now we're gonna have random clips. so it doesn't happen every 32 steps. It skips it sometimes. I could actually make it, that's kind of nice. Instead of making it a probability, I'll make it just like every 64. Also do one quick thing, which is to send the sidechain also to uh, the vocal clips and stuff. Yeah, just like that. Let's introduce the the beat again. Yeah, now we're able to vibe. Keep this going, I guess. Or like, you know. I'll send. Uh, 
Uh, actually, I want this. <laughs> That's gonna be a lot of stacked wires, but... Actually, I'm gonna want this to be off, because this is like, um, kind of... <laughs> That's so much stack cables. This is kind of like, um, adjusting the side chain. It could be suddenly really loud and stuff, and that would be not nice. So anyway, I'm sending the clock to marbles here to have it triggered random, uh, well, to have it generate a random trigger uh, in sync with the beat, and I'm going to be able to send that into um, the tipped up one right here, which is another sampler. I basically have like three samplers, right? Like sample drum, uh, pico drum here, and the tipped up one. And I'm gonna send that in here and then send the tipped up one to like, to where? That's a good question actually. Oh, well, I can send it to my mixer here. Um, see what that sounds like. Yeah, there we go. 808 cowbell. And it's random. You can't you don't know when it's gonna happen. I can change the bias. Make it happen often. But yeah, it's the cowbell. Yeah. Hmm. Hello. Anyway. Yeah. Let me see if I can pitch it another one. Yeah, I think that's good. For, for Smash. Yes. Maybe I want to make it actually like... Let me... There's a million wires. Yep. <laughs> All right. Nice. We're going to hydrate to this beat. Like mode, it's kind of cool because you can see like both samples. 